Hello everybody, my name is Pizza and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I will show you a very simple way to enable your first person controller to interact with the environment that is turning on a light switch, opening a door, a box, a drawer or pretty much anything you need in your game. Bear in mind I'm using a mobile implementation because I know that's what my subscribers want to see right now, but this will work with any first person solution, obviously within Unity. Enough chit chat, let's get right into it. Why do I always do that? Every single time. <gasps> Let's go. So in this one, we're gonna create two different scripts that will represent the two ends of the interaction. The player and the object they are interacting with. The first one is going to cast a ray from the camera's position in the direction it is facing. And if the ray hits a collider on some specified interactive player, it will check if the hit object is equipped with an interactive component that will contain the logic to execute upon interaction. If the ray hits an interactive object with such component, we're going to store a reference to it and find a way to invoke the interaction. It may be a press of a key or a button or whatever you want. I'm using a non-screen button which seems the most logical to pair with the mobile first person controller. So let's start with the interactive component. On a side note, after using the word interactable for years in all my projects, I discovered while writing the script for this video that is not really a popular word in English. So when you read interactable in the code, just read it as interactive or that can be interacted with. Anyway, the interactable script is very simple and I mean very, very simple. I'm just going to declare a new on interaction public method in the class and write some behavior in it, like logging something to the console. And we're done! In your project, you might want to make it as a base class, from which all interactive objects will inherit. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll leave a link to the C -sharp documentation about inheritance in the description. Let's go on to the player script, that I call player interaction controller. We first want to declare some fields, a float for the max distance our array will travel to, to avoid interactions with too far away objects, and a layer mask to specify what layers the interactable objects will be on. For the sake of the tutorial, I will add a reference to UI button in my script that we'll use to invoke the interaction when it is available. If you do the same, remember to add a using unityengine.ui statement at the top of your script. Last thing last. I'll have a private interactable reference to store what interactable object is selected at any moment. The code is really simple, although a bit more complex than the previous script. In the update method, we'll have a div statement that will simply check whether a ray, shot from the transform's position in the forward direction, hits a collider on an interactable layer within the max distance. It will also spit out a raycast hit variable that will store the data about the hit object. Bear in mind that I plan to attach this component to this camera. If you're planning otherwise, you might want to reference the camera's transform and use that. If the condition evaluates the true, we set current interactable to the interactable component of the hit object. Remember, it may also be null, so we help check whether we actually can interact with something later. If the condition evaluates to false, we'll simply set current interactable to null. Since I'm using a UI button, I'll make it interactable only if current interactable is not null. Last thing we'll need to do is declare a new function called, for example, interact, which will be invoked by the button or whatever way you choose to do so, inside of it. If current interactable is not null, we'll simply call the onInteraction method of the interactable class. And that's it, let's go back to the editor. Okay, so the scene is already set up but let me take you through the steps we need to take in order to have our system working. The first thing I'll let you notice is how the player interaction controller is attached to the camera. Again, if you want it in any other position, you will have to reference the camera's transform into the script in order to have the raycast correctly. For the tutorial, I'm setting the max distance to 5 units and I'm having the interactable layer mask set to whatever layer I want to have my interactive objects on. As my example interactive object, I chose this nice red box, to which I have attached the interactable component. Make sure that your interactables are positioned on the correct layer, again, I'm using a custom one, and you might want to do so as well. 
The last thing you might have noticed on the player interaction controller component is that I have referenced the interact button to a UI button set up in the scene. Apart from the custom graphics, we want to remember to set the interact method from our controller script as a listener for its on-click event. Now let's hit play mode and test it out. As I approach the red box, you will see the interact button in the bottom right corner turn on because the ray is actually eating an interactive component. If I click on the button, you can see in the bottom left corner the console message that we were expecting, which means everything is working properly. Moreover, if I look away from the box, you can clearly see the button turn off, as the reference to the current selected interactable is set to null. It is kinda all of it, but for the sake of the tutorial, I created a new mono behavior that inherits from the interactable class to show you an example of how to implement it further. It is attached to this lever in the scene, and it is supposed to start an animation when interacted with by engaging the animator component attached to the same object, just as you can see on the screen right now. Okay, so that was it. As always, it was a pretty generic implementation, but you should now be able to expand on it and fit it to your game's needs. This said, if you have any ideas, suggestions, doubts or anything, feel free to share them in the comments and I will try to reply to most of them. With this out of the way, I've been Tito, and if you decide to stick around, see you next time.